Hey guys, welcome back to Cast Dice Reviews, our very second episode of reviews on this channel. Now, uh, again, just like I said in the first episode, this the purpose of these videos is to look at uh, different things that we talk about on the podcast, uh, different products, uh, different model kits, different services uh, that don't always translate well to the podcast medium. Now, I can describe things, and as some of you know, I love to talk and love to tell you about all the things that I am passionate about. Sometimes, though, it's just easier to show you and uh, to talk about it with you while I'm showing you these things. And that's the purpose of this podcast. Now... Uh, today we're going to not be talking about a specific product per se or a particular service so much as we're going to talk about one of those things that has been a, a common question since I've started Cast Dice. Now, for years, I've been collecting uh, 3D printed models. Uh, I am a super big G.I. Joe enthusiast, as you can tell, uh, I always have been. It, it's the thing that got me into uh, toy soldiers, which in turn got me into tabletop wargaming pretty much from the get-go. Um, now, a long time ago, I uh, discovered that uh, on Thingiverse and on Shapeways that there were actually people who made the files to print 28 millimeter, 156 scale G.I. Joe vehicles. Uh, and so I was very excited, uh, being a big passionate bolt action player. Uh, I thought, hey, I can make a bolt action army using these. I can put the G.I. Joe armies of my childhood back on the tabletop and play games with them. And in the process, I discovered I had access to vehicles that as a kid I always wanted and never had a chance to get. As you can see, I'm pretty fired up. I love this stuff. Now, when I started that journey, I didn't know much about the materials uh, that these things were being printed in. And so there was a lot of trial and error. And I ordered a few things and had a few things printed. And for my purpose, um, in and the style of the way that I paint, some of the materials just didn't work. Um, some actually well exceeded my expectations and are fantastic. Um, now, does that mean that every material is bad? Absolutely not. It depends on your purpose. And I guess that's the purpose of what we're going to talk about today. I want to talk about um, three different 3D printing materials, uh, ways you can get things printed in those materials, maybe some of the files um, that you can print into those materials. Uh, for example, um, quite a few, as I said before, of the G.I. Joe vehicles uh, and Transformers in 156 that I have had printed for my collection, which is in the case, um, have come from Thingiverse. Now, Thingiverse is a free uh, file sharing service. Um, are there other places? Absolutely. I happen to use Thingiverse uh, because I can find what I'm looking for on there and I can send it to someone who has a 3D printing service and they can print things for me. Now, that means that I am not an expert on how to print things. In fact, I'm the opposite. I pay someone else to do it for me. Uh, a gentleman in the United States, who I will mention later in the video, who then ships me back things. I order things in bulk, he ships me a box, I'm set for the next 12 months. That's pretty much how I go. Um, <clears throat> now there is a variety of materials though, um, as I said, that <sighs> there really are a lot of different characteristics. So today let's start by talking about a couple of them. Uh, and I will show very detailed examples of these later. Um, PLA is probably the most uh, commonly accessible material. Um, it is layered. You can see it. If you run your fingernail down it, you can hear my fingernail on the surface. And I will show a much more zoomed in version in a second. Um, it is lightweight. It's pretty durable. Um, and I mean, you can bash things and no problems. Now, there's also a material that Shapeways uses. Um, Shapeways is, of course, like Thing Thingiverse, you can find files um, of vehicles that you like on there, but unlike Thingiverse, where you can, you get the base file and then you can adjust it by percentage size, Shapeways is a very specific uh, service. It They provide you vehicles that you can then order from them, so there is no paying someone else you pay them directly and they print it and they send it back. And they give you a wide variety of uh, printing materials. 
it often depends on the maker and what they've made available. Um, I know that Mel's Miniatures is something that I often, uh, is a company within Shapeways that I often order from for both Star Wars Armada, Star Wars Legion. Um, and he has limited the printing options of his models um, to the higher quality material. And that's the stuff I'm going to be talking about in a minute. It is expensive, uh, especially if you're having shipping to the lovely land of Oz down under. Um, and it does take a while, but man, th the products are great. And I will show you some pretty close up examples of those in a minute. And then the last one I'll be talking about today is what this vehicle, this uh, 156 Mauler is made out of, which is a uh, like a gray resin printing material. So I think we should probably get stuck in rather than having me just tell you about it. Again, um, I don't, I am not an expert on these materials. I just know what it's like to work with them from a hobbyist perspective. And um, it's just a few of my observations about these materials and how they work. Um, if you are looking to, you know, buy or have something made in these materials, um, if you know anything about 3D printing, the technology of it, this is probably not the video for you. However, um, I would love any feedback and thoughts that you have. And if you know something about these materials that I haven't mentioned uh, or secrets that might help me to work with this material better, please comment below. Let's take a look, shall we? And now let's take a look at some of these actual models that we've been talking about. Why don't we start with the lowly PLA? Um, now this is a robot printed. This is a Star Wars droid, of course. And this is PLA. Now PLA is one of the more common 3D printing materials. It's the one that um, sort of was the first on the scene in a lot of places. Um, and you can often, I guess you most often see people printing in it. Um, if you look along the way, you can hear it. And you can see there's tiny little gradations. And that's from where the printer just prints line by line by line by line going up. And they adhere to one another. But you can see the actual print lines on models like this. Um, and it creates a texture on the surface. Now, when I first started working with this, uh, my first couple of models weren't exactly um, fantastic. Um, it is a basic material. Um, usually today you can get things... Uh, printing it relatively inexpensively, um, but I didn't necessarily know how to print on material like this. Um, but so there's some ways to get around um, that texturing if you don't want it on your models. Uh, here is another vehicle printed out of a very similar material. Um, now this is a slightly different material, but what I did was I used the flat of my hobby blade. Now you'll notice that there really isn't a big, great amount of texture along that roof. Whereas previously there was that same line by line by line by line texture, um, which you can kind of still see on the windshield, particularly if we look at the back. Uh, again, just by scraping the flat areas um, smooth with the back of my hobby blade, um, it took a fair bit of time, but I was able to get rid of a lot of that texturing. Um, now, you'll notice that this actually looks pretty good. I mean, this is this came out of the box actually looking extremely rough. Um, and that's because... Um, you know, just the texturing of the materials. However, um, once I'd smoothed it out, I'm using the back of my hobby blade and just uh, rinsing it off again with some water and then letting it dry. And then a good prime. I mean, the primer really did sort of fill in a lot of those gaps as well. So I, I think I can actually get a really nice paint job off of this vehicle. Um, now, if you are wondering what it looked like if I didn't smooth it out, well, here is a vehicle that I painted. Here's the, the exact same Jeep. Um, and all I did to this one was very simply prime it. I just gave it a good prime, thick enough so that it sort of soaked into the layers that the 3D printer lays down. Um, and then 
uh, I let it dry and painted. Uh, now you need to be really careful because it's really easy to over prime and that will just kill the detailing on the model. But in the case of this, I'm you know pretty darn excited uh, about how it came out. Now I did cheat a little bit and I used this uh, sponge technique for the whitewash to, to make it look like the whitewash you know was flaking up. And that really did um, hide you know the worst of the sins of the cornering um, and some of the edges of this model. That said, um, unless I had my nose stuck in the model and it was directly under a light, I don't think you would have seen it. Um, again, here's a PLA vehicle that I absolutely love. Um, and this was actually my first PLA vehicle to paint. Uh, it is a 3D print of the G.I. Joe APC. Um, now, if you look carefully, you can still see you know, some of that texturing on the side, but you have to really, and of course, um, when I'm recording this, I have some pretty intense lighting behind me uh, just to be able to show contrast on models and detail. But on the tabletop, you just cannot see that texturing at all. It blends right in. Um, also, I used, when I was painting it, again, I used a little bit of feathering along the edges um, to make it look more organic. Uh, that's my painting, not the model itself. Uh, and by doing that, you know, a lot of that texturing sort of disappeared as well. Again, I kind of cheated by using the sponge method. Um, but as I used um, a dry brush on the bay, sorry, on the wheels and the bottoms of the model, you can see a little bit of the 3D printing process right there on the back if you look carefully. Um, now I did use uh, some of Games Workshop's uh, mud effect paint. Um, and actually Typhus Corruption was the one I used to help to break that up on the wheels uh, and the bottom of the vehicle. And I think that helped. Um, I've recently started using their actual mud effect paint. And I think that would really do a great job of getting rid of the sort of those lines on the bottom that unless you're again, stuck right into the model, you can't tell. Um, again, uh, something that I've done with a lot of these vehicles, with the front of that one, and with that one, um, by throwing a few areas like windshields with extreme highlights and areas like that, um, it really does draw the eye away from areas that might have uh, texturing show up on models and make your model sort of look 3D printed. Um, I, look, again, I'm super happy with how this one came out. I've been using it for, God, over a year now in a lot of battles um, on the tabletop, both as terrain uh, for Star Wars Legion and for, you know, other games. And with all that wear and tear, um, PLA is a wonderfully durable material. Um, this model is great. There's just a few spots where the paint's rubbed. Um, but that has more to do with how I've been packing this because it's just too big to fit in a figure case. This model is huge. Um, but PLA, it's light. It's generally durable. It's a great material. It's inexpensive. Um, usually if you contact someone with a 3D printing service, PLA is one of the more inexpensive uh, materials. And you, know, you can just get some great models made out of this stuff. Uh, I, you know, It takes a little bit of work to get it. To, you know, top tier if you're looking for, you know, to win painting awards or whatnot. But it is a great material for tabletop gaming. And yeah, I love it. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Now, for those of you who um, like to use services who may not have a 3D printing, 3D printer themselves um, and like to use a 3D printing service like Shapeways, um, this is a Lando Calrissian model. I know it's hard to tell because it's see-through. It's almost like a translucent translucent ghost um this is a lando model from mel's miniatures which is a shop on shapeways and this is their highest detailed material that is available now you'll notice for example you can see it in the crease down his leg and in the folds on his cloak and on his shoulders i know this is the camera's having a hard time focusing and getting the detail going here um, but there's almost like a white material. Um, now, I haven't been able to find out in my research why that happens, but it's almost like um, 
the material itself is so incredibly finely feathered that dust, I think, or some something will collect on it um, over time. Now I have cleaned it off using the back of my hobby blade um, and I've put the model back on the shelf uh, and then kind of forgotten about it and worked on something else and come back and the white material has returned. Uh, again, that's what makes me think perhaps it's dust. Uh, I'm happy to be wrong. If somebody knows, please comment below. Um, so I actually damaged a few models trying to get rid of that white when I was first messing with it. Uh, here's Leia in a bounty hunter suit in the same material. Again, white, that sort of white residue is all over some of the details on this model. Um, again, you can see it in the, the sort of down the leg. Uh, it's just a pain. Um, but I found uh, after a little experimentation, the best way to get rid of it isn't to wash it, which is what my initial, you know, thought would be, because that's what I usually do with models before before I paint them. Um, it's actually to use a dry truth brush and to give the model a very subtle, um, you know, firm, but not too firm. You don't want to break the, the model because it is, this material is extremely, it's great for fine detail, but it is breakable. Um, it's, it's a fragile material. You don't want to drop any of these models. It's not PLA. Uh, but, and it, you know, if you scrub too hard, you're absolutely going to break a wrist. You're going to break a weapon. You're going to break, you know, all sorts of detail off these and you need them. Um, I mean, that's why you get material, you know, models painted in this material is for the detailing. Um, but if you, you know, give it a nice, a nice, uh, firm but not too firm rub with a, a dry toothbrush, that'll come right off. And then if I prime it immediately, um, you know, it works really well. Uh, for example, here is a model printed in that material. This is another Mel's model. This is again from Shapeways. This is a Death Trooper. Um, and if you, now you can see it because it's been painted. Um, if you look along his thigh, you can see a texture there. Um, this is one of the models that I tried desperately to get that white residue off, and I tried a bunch of different ways, and in the process, I kind of damaged the model, but even then, you know, not a problem. But as you look, again, there is wonderful detailing on this model, his back, along his weapon, his helmet, you know, his holstered weapon. It is you know, a great material to be, to print models in. I mean, you can see the buckle, you can see the pouches, this helmet detail. I mean, it is a wonderful material, um, but you can end up with, you know, just slight um, imperfections, you know, graininess, just, just a hint of it. Um, which again, if you're, you know, playing tabletop, you know, have, planning to have basic tabletop paint jobs on your models, it's not a problem. Uh, again, here's another model in the exact same material. Um, and you can see just a tiny bit on his thigh of that sort of graininess. But the rest of this model is smooth as a baby's bottom. And it's just, you know, the detail, again, is exquisite. So again, this is the, I believe this model is the second highest detail um, printing in that same material from Shapeways. Um, unlike my Lando, which is the top. Um, and there are a number of companies that allow you to print pieces. Now here is a Stormtrooper with a way oversized backpack. Um, that backpack is actually in the wrong scale. And when I ordered it, I didn't quite realize that. And then I stuck it on the model and went, oh yeah, that, that doesn't work at all, does it? Um, so that's why this model isn't painted. I will take it off and put a cloak on his back. Um, but the helmet is more what I wanted to show you. Um, Skull Forge Miniatures, uh, through their Shapeway stores, sells um, Minbin Stormtrooper helmets. And I really wanted to do a Mud Trooper slash Minbin Trooper army. So I was able to get an entire army's worth of helmets for a really reasonable price. Um, one of the problems that, you know, sometimes Star Wars Legion critics 
um, voice is particularly with the original core set of stormtroopers and rebel troopers there's just not enough differentiation in the models that you can put on the tabletop so having those alternate heads and helmets um, now here's one that i've painted up um, it's not up to my usual you know <laughs> extreme take forever to paint hobby standard but i really wanted to crank out an army and i wanted it to look dirty and mucky and you know muddy um, now that is a cloak from Victoria Miniatures, but the helmet, again, it's just a standard FFG stormtrooper with the head cut off. And that is one of the skull forged Min Bin stormtrooper helmets. You know, you might say what makes it different. It's that forward, um, forehead plate on the model. Um, and by having alternate heads, you know, I'm able to cut off the existing heads and reposition them. And it really does give a lot more life. Um, to you know, break up the the same sameness of the core set models from way back when. I, it should be noted that at the time of recording this, FFG has announced and has uh, spoiled the cards for their expansion packs for Stormtroopers, um, for the Stormtrooper Edition Pack, which allows you to add four new sculpts of Stormtroopers, both with special weapons or as specialists or just with basic blasters, to allow you to add that variety to your models. Um, I think the community was just calling out for some some ways to make things look a little different. And uh, FFG has absolutely listened. And I'm really excited to get some of those models to add to my force. Um, but that is the end of that. Let's move on to a material that I absolutely love and I have a lot of time for. And that is from what my 3D print guy in the states that i often use calls it um, he calls it 3d printing uh, i believe it's a resin now when you get this material um it is way smoother I i'm trying to show you you know light reflecting off the side and it's just not working because there's almost no texturing on this model um i think i spent an exact 30 seconds on this particular turret to make it look nice. Uh, and you just get, I mean, the detailing maybe isn't as sharp as, oh, maybe you can see a little bit of a texture there. Um, the detailing isn't maybe as sharp as the Shapeways material um, for, you know, tiny infantry models, but it is just so smooth and nice. Now you'll notice along the bottom, there's like a, there's, you know, little bits sticking out. That's because when it's printed, it's printed to supports. Um, and so those need to be broken off. And my 3D print guy has broken those off for me and shipped it to me. Then, you know, it just takes a little bit of time with a hobby knife to cut them off and stick them on. Now, to compare, again, this was a, you know, you can see that the texturing on the windshield and the windows and kind of on the door on this model, right? Well, let's compare that to that material that I just showed you, this, this gray resin. Here is a thunder machine, which uh, I spent a little bit of time, uh, you know, smoothing the sides and edges of. But, I mean, how good does that look? This is just, absolutely love this material. Um, Again, it doesn't have all of the exquisite detail that you would sometimes expect from like a Warlord Games um, resin model. Sorry, I'm having a hard time holding this. Uh, but you, you know, um, now I did add the pipes to the side and the gas can. Those are from a sort of gas land kits and the mini guns are as well. Uh, but this just is a basic resin 3d print is fantastic um, you can see particularly here uh, this black gap um, on the vehicle you know that would be a window that people could peek out of if you i mean you can just see there is no texturing there and that wouldn't have been an area that i could smooth out with my blade it's just great now if we look very carefully on the side again we are using some pretty intense lights uh, it's the blacks reflecting <laughs> weirdly um, but you can't really see the texturing. The only texturing you can see is right here. Uh, but again, and I guess a little bit on the tire. 
but this is a fantastic material. Um, this is my preferred 3D printing material. I really do like working with this. Uh, let's take a look on, on another vehicle. Um, you know, sometimes extreme colors like white and black make 3D printing texturing show. Uh, you can tell there's a little tiny bit here, uh, right on this corner panel. But if you look at the rest of the vehicle, this is of course a 3D printed uh, G.I. Joe Snowcat. There is just none of that texturing. Um, yeah, I'm a massive fan. And again, I've thrown in a few, the turret isn't exactly attached at this point. But if we look at ways to possibly add detail. Um, I've added black lining to all the gaps. Uh, and of course, I put that ridiculously gray, um, gray, gray shade, gray, gradiented um, windshield um, and extreme highlighted both the headlights, which aren't really showing up in this light, and the windscreen wiper from the front. So when you look at this vehicle, it drags your attention to that and gives you some of the detail that maybe printing in this material maybe not, doesn't always have. Um, now here is an artillery piece painted in the same material. Uh, please excuse that the rockets look a little bit like lipstick at the moment. It is in multiple pieces because I wanted it to move. Um, but this is printed in the same gray resin material that the other G.I. Joe vehicles were. Uh, this is the Cobra version of the MMS in case you're wondering. Um, But again, I've added some of that extreme highlighting to uh, almost give it a little more detail than perhaps the model might have had otherwise um, to make it look a little more interesting. Um, but yeah, I do really like this material. As I said, it is my preferred material of choice. Uh, but recently we're starting to see companies uh, print infantry models in this stuff. Um, I think the technology is just improving and we just happen to be living sort of in the golden age. Um, now here's a Skull Forge model directly from Skull Forge. This is not through their Shapeway store. Uh, this is an Obi-Wan Kenobi model. Uh, look at that detail. Again, it is just astonishing. Um, and just like the vehicles, if you hold the model at certain angles, there will be certain surfaces that might have just a hint of texturing, but most of that comes right out with... Um, you can tell it right there on his cloak, if you can see where the line, where the light is showing. Um, but when you're cleaning the model like you would any other model, uh, if you just use the back of your hobby blade and just sort of run it along that to smooth it out, most of that just disappears right out. Um, I've painted quite a few Skull Forge and other infantry models painted in this material uh, recently, and man is it good. Now, I did show you the bottom of the turret, and it had those little lumps or almost like pimples or pock marks on the bottom. That is what they are. Those are the supports. Um, now, those are not difficult to break off. In fact, here we go. I mean, they just pop off. Uh, and of course, that might leave a little dimple on the model. Uh, and by dimple, I don't mean a hole, but I mean just that little lump, which again, you use a hobby blade and pop right off. Now, it is better to use a tool for this, uh, especially where there's multiple contact points because that makes it just more durable. Um, I know that Skull Forge leaves these on, uh, particularly when they are shipping models so that they don't break in transit. It really does make the model more, as you can see, I've just been snapping those supports off again and again. Uh, it makes the model more durable in shipping. Now, I don't want to pop something off I'm not supposed to, but as you can see, it is not a big deal to get rid of that. Now, again, those little lumps exist. Just use a hobby blade, cuts right off. Uh, I, yeah, big fan, can't wait to paint Obi. Uh, now, speaking of the models that I have painted in this material, here is an Imperial officer from my Minbin army. This is by Skull Forge. This is the same material. Um, he also was attached to one of those sprues with all the supports. Uh, I just cut them off. As you can see, his back, he does not have any of those little lumps. Uh, he has none of that texturing. 
it's just, yeah, this, this model could be straight out of the box or a blister from Games Workshop or Fantasy Flight. And it is a 3D printed model. I mean, we really have come a long way. And painting this model was an absolute dream. Uh, there was just so much detail and texture that it was just really easy to paint. Um, I will be doing a full review of Skull Forge models later. Um, however, you know, spoilers, big fan. Uh, so, and this guy might look a little bit like your favorite Star Trek captain. Make it so. Anyway, let's move on. Um, now, if you want to see what that material looks like off of its sprue, but on a base while it's ready, um, here is a mostly cleaned, battle-damaged Darth Vader model. Um, as you can see, you can still see on his cloak, there's still some texture marks. Um, and there are still a few contact points on his back that I haven't quite smoothed out. Um, a few, he had a lot of supports because he has so much texture. So I did spend a lot of time breaking them off carefully. Uh, but as you can see, this is just an astonishingly good model. Now I did talk at length about how PLA is a very durable material and how the Shapeways fine detail models are often uh, fragile. Now this is somewhere in between. Um, now when I was assembling this model, I didn't, or sorry, assembling, when I was taking him off of his sprue, um, you know, that cloak's attached. That is not multiple pieces, which is something that you <laughs> definitely would not see in uh, like a Games Workshop model. This would be in multiple pieces and you'd have to stick it together. Um, this was all one piece out of the, you know, out of the packaging. Um, and I had no problems getting him off. It was great. I took my time. I was careful. And then I took a picture with the model showing my friend, wow, look how cool this is. And then I put it down and I put my lamp down on top of the model. Uh, and in the process, I shattered this leg, his robotic leg in three places. Uh, now, thankfully, it's a fragile, in being a fragile sort of brittle material, um, it broke cleanly and I just glued it back in and you can't see the brakes now at all. So painting that is not gonna be a problem. However, be warned, this material does break. And when it does break, um, again, it is fairly brittle, but it is very easily repairable. Again, this is why this is my favorite material. Um, here is the leader of Inferno Squad. Again, fantastic detailing. Um, I did fully clean this model, uh, trying to get the texturing so you can see. I mean, it is smooth, it is clean. There is great detail on this model that is just, a, it's just brilliant to paint. It's just like that Imperial officer I showed you before, and I'm looking forward to painting her soon. Um, you can really see it, if I can get the camera to focus on her helmet, uh, it is just, yeah, lovely. Now, getting models painted in this material is less expensive than getting the Shapeways material, uh, depending on who you are printing with. Um, I have a guy in the States who I get most of my uh, 3D printed models uh, printed from. I'm a big fan. Um, but I found someone whose work I liked. Um, I know that you know different people print different ways using different machines. There are other materials out there. There's a, a green clear material that I've seen out there that a lot of people are using these days. The models themselves are relatively cheap. Uh, sorry, the printers are relatively cheap and you're able to get some great results. I have not actually used those yet. Um, I, do, I have had, as I said at the beginning, a lot of people ask me, um, where I get my 3D printed models. Um, I do have, you know, that interest in a lot of things that isn't your stock standard and, you know, wanting, especially the GI Joe stuff that you just can't get other places. Um, I think this gray resin 3D printed material is probably my favorite. Um, there is an element of, as I said, fragility to it, but it is more durable than the Shapeways material. I can get mine printed to excellent results um, for way less than what Shapeways charges, but for way more than what PLA would cost. 
Um, but I think PLA works very well for this re for these really large vehicles. Um, I have a GI Joe base that I have printed up in PLA. Um, the old base headquarters toy uh, takes up an entire shelf on my painting wall. And um, yeah, I just would not have been able to afford to have that printed in a resin, but to have it printed in this material, I mean, it, this just looks great. Um, you know, use a few tips and tricks and all of a sudden, you know, some of that texturing just disappears. Um, now, it should be said, and I forgot to mention this before, that while we are looking, speaking of smoothing out PLA, if you look at the hood, it is pretty smooth um, underneath the windows, um, the nose piece. That's because this section, I smoothed that with my blade and then I wanted it super smooth. So I actually put an extremely thin layer of green stuff along here and then let it dry for I think 48 hours and came back and you know smoothed it with my hobby blade again. And it made a massive difference. Um, but I tried to do that on another version of this tank and it was hot garbage. So you wanna be careful because I've actually ruined um, these vehicles, some of them trying to smooth out panels that I thought, you know, I can't live with that being like that. I need to make it look nice. Um, you know, it just takes trial and error. I have ruined a few things, but with PLA in particular, it's so cheap that, um, you know, I usually don't mind ruining a couple vehicles and just getting more printed. Um, this is of course that gray resin. Um, and again, that's what it looks like inside. Um, this is a hollow vehicle and it has those same supports on the inside holding it together that, you know, Obi has holding on to his back. And there you have it, gang. Uh, those are some examples of those three materials that I talked about. PLA, the Shapeways high detailed and second high detailed uh, materials, and of course, the uh, resin technology that is currently available for 3D printing today. Um, now it should be said that just 12 months ago that resin material was very rare. Um, again, I did mention earlier, there is a new material that some people are using. There's a very affordable 3D printer. I know a few of my friends have. I think it's about three to $500 Australian. Um, it's even cheaper in the US, of course. Uh, and that prints in a translucent green. Uh, I have seen some wonderful results from that, um, but those are only in pictures. I don't, I've never actually seen one in person, so I didn't want to necessarily comment on that. I know that technology exists, um, but for the purpose of these videos, I was just sticking with my own personal experience. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if there are anything that any topics or uh, products that you guys would like me to cover on this channel, um, a review that you'd like to see. I'm not really into the whole idea of an unboxing. Um, I feel like most of us can open a box and show things. Um, that said, um, I will be covering some of my favorite pre-painted terrain from Battlefield in a Box, uh, Gale Force 9, shortly. Uh, but that will be more to show you the quality of the product when it comes out of the box as it is a pre-painted terrain piece. Uh, guys, as always, if you have any suggestions on how you can make this video better, uh, please leave a comment below. Uh, again, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, we are trying to uh, just increase the coverage uh, and the, <laughs> the range that these videos travel. Uh, and the more subscribers, uh, the more YouTube will uh, share it with other people. Now, thank you very much for listening and for watching. Uh, my name is Brad from Cast Dice. And if you have any feedback for what I've done today that doesn't fit below uh, and you'd like to send a longer message, and I know some people have and do, uh, you can go to our Facebook page, which is C-A-S-T-D-I-C-E, and you can leave a message. There's only one person who checks it. That's me, Brad. I would love to hear from you. Now, as our old buddy Casey says, when you are playing the games that we know and love, may your dice roll hot, may your beverages be cold, but more than anything else, when you are playing these games, we hope that you are having fun. Good night.